Hello, and welcome to our paint along afternoon entitled Grand Millennial Canvas Stretching. Um, we're here to turn any piece of fabric that you might have around the house into a beautifully stretched canvas uh, that you can then paint on. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these today. Um, I know there's there's lots of videos on how to stretch canvas. Um, mine, the way I learned, I learned in art school, but I learned in a historical methods and techniques class, which was a little bit different from how I was taught elsewhere. Um, and it gives you the option of doing these cool things with, um, these are called upholstery tacks on the side that add a nice little bit of uh, character to your piece here. So let's get started. I'll just get myself comfortable. You're probably wondering why I'm doing this on my kitchen floor and I will show you or explain it in a little bit. But first, the materials you're going to need today depend a little bit on um, the material you're stretching and the canvas you're stretching them on. I have, let's start off with the canvas. It's just a plain eight by 10 canvas. I got it in a 10 pack. Um, the stretching on this isn't actually quite very good. It's pretty loose actually, uh, but that's fine. Um, yeah. I find it cheaper to buy the pre-stretch canvas than actually buying a stretcher, uh, but that's sort of your choice. I have a fabric with a pattern that I want to stretch over top. I like this lovely blue and white pattern. I have a measuring tape. You could use a ruler. I have a marker, a pair of pliers, pair of scissors, a small flathead screwdriver. These are upholstery nails. You can use regular nails. Um, these are half inch. They go a half inch deep. I wouldn't recommend anything too much deeper unless you've got a very thick uh, stretcher bar because driving these into thin wood can eventually crack it if you put go too deep. And I have my hammer with the claw on it, which can come in handy. And I have my sewing kit. And out of here, I'm going to need a needle and thread. And I'm going to pick a red. I'll pick the orange, bright orange thread today. You want something that's going to be a high contrast with the fabric that you have. Okay. So for this piece over here, I started by removing the canvas and you can do that easily enough by taking a flathead screwdriver and wedging it underneath each nail and then just, you know, pushing and lifting up. And then eventually I would grab them with the pliers and pull it out. I'm not going to do that right now because I found this fabric to be quite see-through when I when I did a test earlier. Um, this is probably the thinnest fabric you want to kind of stretch. Uh, it doesn't stretch either way, which is good. Um, and I think it's strong enough to not, you know, rip right out of the nails or rip right out of the um, staples if you're using a staple gun, but it is a little bit thin and a little bit see-through. So I'm actually just going to stretch it straight over top of, I think this has a front and a back. Yeah. Straight over top of the white canvas so that it has that brilliant white background to kind of reflect a little bit more light up there and make the contrast stand out. So, Once you've got your stretcher bar, or in this case, my canvas, you're going to start measuring. 
I want to measure Now I said this is an eight by 10, so that would mean halfway point would be four inches. So I'm gonna measure four inches and just put a little dot right there. And the same thing on the other side, four inches and a little dot right there. There we go, bring it a little closer. And this is 10 inches, so at 5 inches, I'm going to put a little dot right there. And a little dot right there. So now I know where the middle of my stretcher bar is. So that's great. We start when we're stretching canvas, you stretch starting in the middle and then pull the slack out sort of towards the corner. So that's why knowing where the middle is, because that's where you're going to start. Now, you can cut your fabric first, but I found I like to actually find the weave of my fabric first because that's going to make sure that I cut fabric the right size for my stretcher bar and for stretching and I'll sort of explain how that works so grabbing your bright thread now again I have this bright orange color get a needle it doesn't have to be the finest needle in the world but I think if it's a little on the thinner side, that's good. And thread the needle, pull the thread in half. And decide which part of your fabric you're going to want to have go over the middle of your stretcher. So I think it's sort of that being the middle is a good idea just going to start at one end of the fabric poke a hole and then i'm going to hope for some super duper eyesight because this is where things get a little bit tricky what you want to do let's see if i can show it here you want to follow a single strand of the fabric as best you can i know see there's there's Lots and lots of tiny, tiny fabric uh, warp, the warp and the weft, as they call it, for weaving. So you want to pick a strand, pick a spot. And my usual method is to just use my needle and using my needle as a guide, find a spot where I'm not going across all the all the threads in one way. So if I'm, you know, here, I'm going across both for threads. I'm definitely on an angle. This looks about right. So I'll poke it through there and then flip it over. Now, why are we doing this? You might ask. This seems unnecessarily tedious. Um, and we're doing this because when you stretch fabric, fabric has again threads that go sort of vertically and horizontally and if you stretch those on a diagonal if you don't stretch them exactly horizontally and vertically you're going to end up with a pretty warped up canvas by the end of it so keeping things on the vertical and on the horizontal is going to help you get a good stretch and this is why I actually don't cut until the very end either, because you can eyeball it and say, yeah, that looks about right. And then you do your cut and then you realize that actually what you thought was ver vertical and horizontal were off by, you know, as much as 15 degrees or so. And that 
you know, and then and then you've already cut your fabric, so that becomes hard to correct at that point if you haven't given yourself enough space. You'll end up with too little fabric or no choice but to stretch it crooked, and that's going to give you grief later. So just working my way through, I haven't put a knot at the end of the thread. I really, you know, the one thing about using thread is that you can pull it out at the other end um, when you're done and it won't leave any marks. I could try using, you know, a pencil or um, I guess chalk or anything, but that's just going to leave a mark on my canvas at the end of it and I don't want to do that. So this is why we are using the rather tedious method of thread and flipping things back and forth and so on. So while I'm at this, I might as well tell you why I am sitting here on my kitchen floor. Um, my apartment has a lot of carpet and I found that hammering on carpet gave me a lot of, um, gave me a wobbly surface to work on, which meant that when I was hammering away, a lot of the nails went in crooked and it was a waste of a lot of nails, so. Yeah. So having a good firm surface is important when you're doing this. Um, and that's why I'm working in my kitchen because my kitchen is linoleum on cement, which makes it probably the hardest thing I can hammer on around. I was, wasn't too thrilled about working on any of my tables because I don't have like a, a rough workbench. Um, and I worry that the nubs on some of the upholstery tacks would uh, bite into my good furniture, which would stink. Because surprise, surprise, it's all for my grandparents. I actually didn't know about uh, this grand millennial interior design craze until very recently. Um, but parts of me definitely approve. I think it depends maybe on what your what style your grandparents had. My grandparents both immigrated from Holland just after getting married. So my grandmother always had a very practical, clean sort of traditional Dutch aesthetic that I really enjoyed. <laughs> In Dutch, they say gezellig, which is a, a very phlegmy way of sounding, of saying something that is, a, saying a wonderful feeling, I guess. It's one of those words that doesn't really have a translation in English, but there we go. Okay. So as I finish off making this line, I can put that to the side. And you can see it's not perfect, but it's close enough that I can tell which way the threads of my fabric are going, right? And I'm not gonna mix up and say, ooh, I can, you know, stretch it on the canvas this way, because that won't work. So, having done that, I'm going to lay my fabric flat on the ground and taking into account my stretcher bars. So, I'll just show you. 
the stretcher bar is a half inch thick and I sort of want an inch at the back so half inch thick and then I want an inch overlap at the back which means I want an inch and a half around my fabric or around my stretcher bar of uh, excess fabric so I'm, I'm not going to make a big science out of this you can be as careful uh, or as sloppy as you need to be to get your desired inch and a half I think I may have to sneak my head in here though because it's better to look down directly from over top when you're doing this so pardon my hair I'm sure everyone's got the uh, pandemic haircut non haircut thing going on right now Just measuring roughly an inch and a half around the canvas. I don't want to put marks any closer because then we run the risk of, you know, having them end up on the front of the front of the work, which I'm not so excited to have happen. So, but as long as they're on the edge. If you have a, a straighter, better way for cutting fabric, fabric power to you. I am uh, doing my best to sort of keep my head out of the frame. So it's a little bit crooked, crooked maybe. All right, and no, it's not perfectly square, but I've got a nice inch and a half overlap on our, all four sides, which gives me enough that I have enough fabric to work with at the back with regards to hammering and the upholstery tacks, but not so much that we have, you know, reams and reams of fabric that we have to deal with, which is just about the amount you want. Okay, so now that we've done all our prep work, it's time to get hammering. And again, I love the idea of hammering in, um, hammering the, t the nails or the tacks, because you have so many different options for the look of things. You can get shiny silver, these I'll show you again up close have a lovely sort of a brass sheen to them. Um, you can get ones with little flowers on them. That's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It gives you a wide variety of uh, aesthetics to work with. So starting where my Taking my middle point and having my thread line up with that middle point as best as I can get it. And I'd better make sure my fabric is check check if your fabric is a one-way fabric, right? Not not the same on both sides. 
you want to make sure you've got it. So that the right side of the fabric will be on the outside or the right side of your work. So once you've got that lined up, and you think everything looks as straight as can be, There we go. Then you select your first tack, push it in as much as you can sort of with your, your thumb, and then begin the hammering process. one down and then we're going to go to the opposite side here and for the stretch you don't really need much more than you know a little bit of a tug with your fingers to get it in place so now i get that down And notice I'm holding the hammer up here. This gives me the ability to be very accurate and light with my taps. It's a big hammer. It doesn't really need to be this big. But because I'm holding it here, I have a great deal of control, the ability to be light, and not smash my thumbs or bend the nails funny ways or whatever. So there we go. We have good tightness, right? And you'll see that start to develop as we go so we've got one and two on either end i'm going to start up on this side here now so one and two upper right hand corner and give that a bit of a pull and i'm pulling in this direction so i'm taking slack up from the surface here but i'm also pulling it away from the tack. Now, how you want to space these is up to you. I usually like to do, in this case, I think I'm going to aim to do between the staples because that's extra pressure on the wood that we don't, doing it on top of a staple would be extra pressure on the wood that we don't need. So we don't want to risk it cracking. So aiming for right around here. Again, tug with your fingertip. Yep. Poke your tack in. And holding the hammer up close. Tap, tap, tap. Ooh. And that's where things go in funny. So if that happens, just. Grab your handy pliers and yank it out. Pull again. Slide your tack in. There we go. There's tack number two. Now, I usually go, my second one's going to actually be across here and pulling out. So 
one, two, three, four, and then you can finish off with five and six. I do this kind of a, a star pattern. And I mean, every people will show you many, many different types of patterns. This is the one I've found I enjoy. That works for me. There we go. One, two, three, four, back up here. Trying to get the spacing consistent, but also not. I think I may have run into now just a hard spot in the wood. And the last side over here. And again, I'm pulling out this direction. And There we go. So three and three. And I'll admit, I think this one's actually too close. I'm going to pull it out and try to give it a little bit more space. Trusty little screwdriver might come in handy here too. There we go. So I've got my six tacks in for up and down. And six is a good number. At this point, I usually rotate the canvas and do the same thing, but for the other direction. So grab a tack. There it is. So, and I don't have the, I don't have the lines, the little fabric line or, or thread line on this direction. You can do it on this direction. And if you have a large enough canvas, I would recommend that I'm putting the little thread in this way too. But this is a smaller canvas, I feel. confident enough in my ability to eyeball it for now.
So there we go. And again. To the right. Buy yourself a good number of, buy yourself extra tax than what you think you might need, because you'll always get those that don't go in quite as straight as you'd planned originally. And again, pulling to the right and away, or back and to the right, I guess, for this side. And then back and to the left on this side. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to make this one. Nope. So this is definitely a rather longer process than the uh, staple gun. Method if you're doing that. All right. Ooh, one more on this side. I'm not doing a good job today I'm keeping my nails straight. There we go. So now we can see that we're starting to get a pretty good stretch on here. There's sort of a, a cross area. I can feel this is slack. This area is slack, but right across the middle here, we've got a good amount of tension. Um, if you want at this point, you can try the drum test, which is just, and if you can get that little bit of drum resonance off of it, you know you're in the right direction. Here, I'll just pull out the our little guiding thread here. And don't do what I did. Don't throw your needle on the floor. Always, always put your needles back when you're done or someone's going to step on it. All right, so now we've got our three anchors, and then I just work out usually doing a set of four for each direction. So we'll go back to this horizontal direction. I'll do four. 
one, two, three, four, and then we'll go back to the vertical direction and I'll do four. And we'll continue working out that way. Again, just sort of slowly pushing the excess fabric, the loose fabric, over into the corners. stuck on it. No luck there. So there's another set on the horizontal, add another set on the vertical. Now, if you are uh, set on, if you are, you know, have a wonderful, beautiful set of fabric and you love it just as it is, you don't need to paint on it, right? You can, you know, I've definitely seen some silks, embroidered silks and things, um, painted materials that, I mean, I don't think they need any paint. They're gorgeous just the way they are. No, nope, I did that out of order. It'll live. Um, if you do decide to paint it though, uh, keep in mind that this is an unprimed fabric. And that means that it's going to be a lot more absorbent than your typical or, or the canvas you stretch canvas or, or primed canvas that you're more familiar with. opening my second box here. You'll also notice that the tacks are going in super easy all of a sudden. That's because underneath here, there are little slots so the stretcher bars stick together and my tacks are hitting the slots. That's fine. The, the slots will actually keep um, keep your fabric in just the same as, as hammering it. That's fine. Uh, the only thing you may want to do at some point is maybe stick a little bit of hot glue under the nails if they start falling out too easily. And that way they can stay in there. It'll still pull the fabric though as long as it's wedged into that little slot. All right. 
four more and then I can show you how we deal with all this extra fabric on the edge here because we don't want that showing. Yeah. Right into the slot. Perfect. Why not? And I should be cartwheeling this. As you get towards the corners, obviously, you, you things get a little bit easier. And you can afford to be less precise if you've already set yourself up for success by this point you'll know it or you'll know that you have to go back to the beginning there we go so yeah i may end up putting a little piece of hot glue under these because they can pop up pretty easily but they are going to keep the canvas back and stretched in an appropriate way now dealing with the corners I usually sort of take one edge, fold it around like that, and try to keep it straight. And then pull the other piece over top like this. Maybe at this point I've got enough fabric so I can throw that corner over this way. And then at this point, if you have staples, a staple gun, you can staple the back in or just use another tack. There you go. Corner number one. Keep in mind. So I've got this side going over the horizontal side, going over the vertical side, as it may be. So I'm going to keep up with that pattern here by pushing the side over like that, folding over. And staple it in like this. Or hammer it in. There we go. So I've got things folded over here. In this corner. And there we have it. So this I could, you know, hang on the wall as is. I could choose any uh, design I wanted to paint on here. Again, I'll just mention that painting on unprimed canvas is different. It's more absorbent. Um, so this painting, you see, I've sort of completed some of the flowers, but I've left some sort of on their our, their first draft. So you can see how I've how the the paint has soaked into the 
fabric here. So initially I put this on so thick, like, you know, it was pretty much caked on, but then it soaked down. You want to apply acrylic that is thick, um, or you want to apply a primer, um, like a clear gloss coat or a clear semi-gloss coat over the whole thing. And that's going to prevent um, the paint from soaking in and spreading, sort of like, uh, I don't know if you've ever dropped a wine or tea on a tablecloth and you know that the wine doesn't you know, just sit there on top, it kind of bleh, soaks in. That will happen to your paint if you use watery paint the first time you on, on an unprimed canvas. It's going to sit on there, soak in, spread out, and um, that might be the aesthetic you want, and that's great. But if you're looking for something like this, where I was hoping for more crisp lines, um, you're going to want to apply, again, either a, a semi, semi gloss kind of a, a coat on top of it, or a high gloss coat first, and then do your painting, or put your paint on as thick and as dry as possible and plan to do two coats. So like I did this undercoat here and then over top of that, I painted with the color and that allowed me to um, keep that detail in there without having it kind of soak into the fabric and fade. Okay. So experiment. Um, this opens up, you know, this is a lovely fabric here, the gold with the sheen on it. Um, opens up a world of possibilities for things you can hang on your wall as a canvas. Um, you've got the furniture tacks up here, which you can choose any sort of design you want. Uh, and then you've got your own design, the fabric that you can hang on the wall, just like this. Okay. So happy exploring. Good luck. And I hope I'll see you next time on my next paint along program. Take care. Bye.